I would like to introduce a rotational movement that is a feature of this early version of the transition rig. I call the movements pronation and supination. This mirror dinghy has been adapted to take the rig by adding a supporting tabernacle. There's also a rotating mast base. The cables that control the mast pass up through the centre of the mast base along its vertical axis for rotation. And there's a system of pulleys below to redirect the cables. The mast base is supported on an annular bearing. And the cables controlling the mast are distributed to levers positioned parallel to the floor of the dinghy. One lever raises the mast and is operated by a system of pulleys. The middle segments of the mast can rotate around each other around the vertical axis. The movement resembles that of the radius and ulna in the forearm, so I have called it pronation and supination. This rotation within the rig is controlled by the second lever in the dinghy. It's a movement that's required when sailing, when changing from tack to tack. This is how it looks from the front. Rotation cups the rig towards the windward side. To cover the mechanism in the floor of the dinghy, a false floor can be added over the top of it to prevent entanglement of the feet. We can now see what happens when the sail and boom are added and the rig is raised. And again, looking from the front, we can see the effects of the middle mast segment rotation on the boom and sail. It produces a cupping of the rig from side to side when the boat changes tack. The following sequence shows the same mast in use on the water, although using an earlier sail. Setting off, the sail jibes and the middle segments now have to be rotated so that the lower part of the sail sets correctly. We can see that happening there. And again, with the dinghy coming towards us, ready to tack, we can see the mast rotated in one direction initially. The tack takes place. And then the middle segment is rotated to shape the cell correctly.